Good morning, everybody, and welcome to It's Gorgomatic. I'm Tim McNiff, and there he is, handicapper extraordinaire Kevin Gorg, back with us once again. In the words of uh, Peaches and Herb, reunited, <laughs> and it feels so good. What a one-hit wonder that was. Yeah, good to be back with you, Timmy, and uh, looking forward to a, a great week ahead as far as the uh, the point spreads go. A fun weekend of wild hockey will be in Pittsburgh Saturday, back home for uh, Zach Parisi's uh Triumphant return to St. Paul on Sunday with the Islanders, so it should be a great weekend. Oh, boy. I was looking at Saturday. I didn't even realize that was on the docket for Sunday. That should be uh, interesting. Interesting is the right word because, you know, the Wild here for the last few years have done these video tributes, and the bit, there's been ovations from the crowd. But a lot of these players had left kind of on their own. This is a buyout situation. There was some certain – Bad feelings on the side of the Parisi camp. So I'll be very curious to see how that plays out on Sunday. You know, the fans are are, are certainly going to show a little love towards Zach. He's a Minnesota guy. He's a well-respected guy. Um, and, it, you know, I think it's really going to be fun to see how he plays against the Wild. He has yet to register a point. He's played decently, according to Barry Trotz, the head coach on Long Island. But uh, Cheerio still in the stat line, and I know he'll be motivated to get something done on Sunday. Show him the love but let them leave without the, the W. That's all that matters, right? Right, exactly. That's exactly what the Wild are looking for. Uh, they catch a break on Saturday, not by choice, but Sidney Crosby dealing with COVID. So like Aaron Rodgers on the sideline, unlike Aaron Rodgers, I believe he was vaccinated. So we won't uh, digress there too much, but whoopsies. <laughs> We're go no, we're going there, just not yet. We're going there. Not right now is what I meant. We can't yeah. get into the passion subjects without the woman that brings the passion, right? And we got her Correct. with us this morning. A Minnesota State Senator Carla Bega, Madam Senator. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Great. How are you? Doing great. Good. Good. Did you get a little good. gold on there this morning, Senator? Uh, yeah, done with the purple. We're going with the golden maroon from the. I'm, I'm She's a gold. Rolling the boat. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm rolling the boat. Uh, what a wonderful day yesterday. Seven-year extension for P.J. Fleck. Great for recruiting. Great for the organization and the team. Uh, great for Minnesota. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I'm i totally excited uh, about this weekend with the Gophers. And, uh, and we'll see uh, how this all plays out um, in November with their football because they got to play well. Yeah, this is the first time I get a chance to talk to either of you guys mm -hmm. since what happened – Sunday. And then, of course, yesterday, as you just uh, mentioned, uh, Senator, big news yesterday, the, yep. the extension for, for P.J. Fleck. So, uh, KG, uh, money well spent and a good plan by the Gophers? Absolutely. Get ahead of it. Uh, you can see where this thing is going. The Gophers have put themselves in a really good spot here uh, in their division. And so get ahead of it right now. You know other schools are going to be courting P.J. Fleck. Uh, I think he really truly is uh, enjoying his time here. I think he's motivated to stay here and build something. And this now uh, financially gives him a reason to do so as well. Well, you think about it. Uh, in 1979, Hayden Fry arrives in Iowa City. And the Hawkeyes have never looked back. Hmm. 1990, there's Barry Alvarez. Arrives in Madison. Look where the Badgers are now. And I used to say, if we could just find that guy. That guy, when the, the, all the stories are coming out of Western Michigan, I do what they frequently do. I grab my wife and force her to watch these stories. Watch a story. Watch a story. This is the guy. This is the guy. Now, I said the same thing about Mike Zimmer. So that puts me no better than 500 if we think that Fleck is, <laughs> is, is right on this whole thing. But um, you know what? The GPA has never been higher. The kids do the community projects. Mm -hmm. um, that GPA is great. They aren't getting in trouble. Oh, and by the way, they're 6-2 and two and bowl eligible with – Four games to play. I mean, when did we ever have that? It's a culture thing. He really has changed that culture. And he's got the whole state believing in him. And that's great. We need to believe in something because Lord knows the Vikings. We can't believe in anything they're doing. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. That, I mean. That was oh, so bad. Well, you know, here's the deal. I, yeah. They, they lost to a, a good football team with a backup quarterback. But for me, Dallas didn't play well. Dallas oh. took a ton of penalties. Yes. They handed that game on a platter to the Vikings in their home stadium. And to me, that was most eye-opening. A loss to Dallas, even with Cooper Rush on its own merits, isn't that big a deal because it's the NFL and backup quarterbacks win in this league. But the way that Dallas played, Dallas played horribly, and Minnesota still couldn't find a way to win. That is a, a real shame. 
the, Zeke was a non-factor. Um, I mean, they just it really was just a, a very bad game. We were out coached. Again, I'm gonna say this time and time again, there's no urgency, horrible play calling. Um, and uh the the press conference after the fact when um Kirk Cousins was talking about timeouts. What are you talking about? Like it just was um the clock management's horrible. Um it's just not it's just not a, a good situation there. No, at all. I had, had a chance to the people. Everybody gets their hands on these all twenty-two films now, right? Mm. And they put them on social media, and it's just very damning where Kirk Cousins is concerned. I mean, there just appears to be free-running receivers on plays where he has time, and he just checks down every time. And you look at those checkdown plays. Go back and watch them. I mean, if you're if you're Delvin Cook. Like when the place called the huddle, I'd be grabbing him as I'm breaking the huddle, going, "Don't check down to me again," you know, right. because I mean, they, they were just teeing off on him. They just yeah. knew exactly what was coming. I'd be He's mad. They <laughs> were six yard runs and just blowing people up. He was going to get yep. somebody k- killed. Yeah, I think part of it's a byproduct of that offensive line struggling in that particular game too. I think quarterbacks <laughs> are creatures of reading their environment, Timmy, and I think mm-hmm. in that particular game. Uh, we haven't seen this a lot from Cousins, but he had the happy feet going. He was throwing the ball early. He wasn't going through his progressions. And I think when Dallas was able to get pressure more often than not, and they did basically sustain pressure throughout that game. I know you're looking at a handful of plays that go out on social oh, media, but even in right. the, at the end of the game, when Dallas was in a quote unquote prevent defense, the four guys they were rushing were still getting in the backfield. So the offensive line had been very good um, considering uh, some of the issues they've had this year up to this point, but I thought the offensive line took a big step back on Sunday night. Yep. And in the run game, because we couldn't, we couldn't run at all. I mean, you just, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, I, I agree with everything that you just said. We were manhandled up front. And you mm-hmm. think about this, where we are as a, you know, people all want to go Zimmer, Zimmer, Zimmer. Uh, uh-uh, I'm not good enough with that. I'm talking Spielman because look at yeah. what Dallas did at the draft. They knew their defense was abysmal. They drafted seven guys. There was not one offensive player taken. And you know where those six, those seven guys are? They're starting on the field. And, you know, and yeah, and on Diggs the field. is leading in, in, I think he's leading in interceptions, Diggs, isn't he? He is. Seven. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's yeah. had one of those weird Lester Hayes like years where every time he catches it, he ends up in the end zone. Yeah. So, um, so crazy stuff. I, and we're getting it, we're seven, eight minutes in. I also want to make sure we touch on the, Oh, yeah. Excuse me, the effort to bring a Minnesota legalized sports gambling because you made us aware that there's something happening today that we should be aware of. Yeah, this is sweet. All of a sudden, I jump up when I see that. I jump up and I'm like, I gotta text Tim and Kevin. And my husband's like, Oh, like, what are you like? You know, and I just was like, Red alert, red alert. Um, so it's a big deal today at 10 30. Uh, Zach Stevenson, who is a state representative from Champlin, is having a press conference announcing. Uh, his plans for legalization of sports wagering. Now, true to form, House member isn't telling the senator uh, any details. But um, what I do know and what is significant for the viewers on this is he's the chair of commerce and uh, he has the jurisdiction over sports wagering. So in other words, he has a lot of power and insight into producing a pathway to make this happen. So now Um, you know, we just have to come together between the house and the Senate, uh, and make sure that, that we walk that path together and we get to the end of it and get it across the, uh, the, into the end zone. So across the, across the goal line. And I think it's, it's a big deal because the house has been other than, um, our good friend, Pat Garofalo has been very quiet and has not talked really anything about sports wagering. So now to see movement, uh, in that area is significant in progress for next session. So you seem to be as surprised as anybody that this was even happening today. And I guess yeah. maybe I shouldn't be uh, surprised to hear this because I thought, well, if you're working on it and he's working on it, wouldn't you be working on it together or at least, you know, cross-referencing or saying, hey. Yeah, no, you you do, <laughs> but, but they haven't really, uh, a member of the majority hasn't really stepped forward and, um, moved legislation in the house. Um, and remember I'm in the minority in the Senate. And so, um, that's why I'm working with my good friend, Senator Karen Housley and, and, and majority leader, Jeremy Miller, because they have the, the numbers and the authority to, um, to go ahead and, right. and try and move this in the house. Nobody in the majority had really started any effort 
and it was Pat and he's in the minority. And so this is a, a significant step uh, forward uh, that now you have people in both majority parties in the legislature moving legislation forward. Got it. All right. OK, so we got things to talk about today. Tonight, we got football tonight and in a game that I guess going into last weekend uh, had zero luster to it. Only a little bit more intrigue because the Jets got off the mat and Carson yeah. Wentz needs to do something to redeem himself after his performance uh, last Sunday. Uh, KG, the Jets came through on, on our, one of our plays that we you have made us aware of, uh, the, the 30 point or more uh, streak. Okay. Yeah, they were they were the one of the two that got it done. The Bears broke our hearts um, after looking like they might win the game as late as uh, early fourth quarter. So yeah, the Jets uh, pulled off a miraculous win. Uh, it was fun to watch, fun to see that coach and his teammates celebrate, and they got a little mojo right now. I mean, they're moving the yeah. ball uh, even with their starting quarterback out. And the trends tell me tonight we're going to see points, guys. Last four games uh, the Jets have played have all gone over. Uh, Colts are four and one in their last five to the over. We got a manageable number at 46. We got two teams playing indoors. Uh, yeah, I'm all about the over tonight, Timmy. I don't really have a strong opinion on the side, but I really like this game to be up and over the 46. Well, you're getting gorgomatic early on. I, said. I didn't even pull <laughs> I the, jumped I the gun a little bit. I'm, I'm excited like, for this graphics. game. I'm like, oh, wait, he's already doing this. I'm just listening. So uh, yeah, I I'm excited for this one. That for me. And that's <laughs> yeah, why yeah. I think, you know, when you, when you have – and this is going back to what we just talked about with Lizing Wager. And I was just in Denver with the Wild and had some money in my DraftKings account. And they have a DraftKings sports book where you can transfer money back and forth. So I'm like, cool. All right. We're Friday night. We're having dinner in Denver. I'm like, well, I got to do something here. And so I put together a little $20 uh, three team NHL parlay. And there were three home teams. I took all three. I did the puck line for those out there that are new to hockey. That means you lay a puck and a half. So the team that you play has to win by two goals or more. And we're sitting at this lovely uh, Mexican restaurant, downtown Denver, enjoying some uh, street tacos. And sure enough, my first two games, the Capitals get an open net goal. Uh, and I'm 2-0. and And I'm sitting on Vegas late night. Because you know, Timmy, i got to save one for late night. And I've got the you Vegas do. Golden Knights at home against a bad Anaheim Ducks team who played the night before in Anaheim. And I'm up 4-1 with eight minutes to go in the game. And I'm literally counting the $250 I'm about to have deposited into my account I go brush my teeth. I come back, sit down at my desk. I'm working on my Gorgomatic stuff for the weekend. And it's a 4-3 game. And I'm like, what the hell just happened out here? <laughs> they they ended up winning the game by one. So I, the parlay was dead. So, but back to where this is going. It's a Thursday night. It's the Jets yeah. and the Colts. I mean, people, let's not pretend here, okay? You either have fantasy football implications or you're <laughs> going to play this game like I am up and over the total. Because otherwise, you ain't going to watch. No, no, no reason otherwise. You must really love football or have some sort of financial investment in this. To, to we do now. Game. We do now. Yeah, yes, and sir. we have both. I think all three of us have both in, in that in that situation. But um, I'm really excited about Mike White. Um, what a, what a, a, a fun guy to watch last week. Uh, I mean, over 400 passing yards um, and uh, 37 completions, I think. And that's that's a record. Uh, for uh, hmm. a, a starter, uh, and I think that that's a, a big deal. He's um, going to take advantage of this as he could. I think he's a third year guy, uh, and uh, you know, so this is kind of his debut and and his team now for a little bit. Um, it'll be anxious to see because Zach Wilson has a knee injury. Uh, who was their starting quarterback? See if 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 um, Mike has. Uh, another couple good games here while Zach is rehabbing to see if they'll go back. I don't, I don't, you usually don't bench a hot quarterback. So um, I don't know, but I think uh, this, this week, speaking of quarterbacks, um, Carson Wentz has been uh, a pretty decent guy uh, throwing the TDs. I've uh, been pretty consistent in his games um, Two mostly he's thrown two. So that's my uh, thinking big him. <laughs> and, uh, so I got once throwing, um, more than, uh, well, one and a half on, on, uh, TDs. You need two out of them tonight. Two out of them. Yep. Two out of them today. And he's been fairly consistent with that. He does have a little bit of a banged up <clears throat> receiving court, but I, he's seemingly to get it done. Um, and then, you know, Jonathan Taylor, which to us go for fans, all too familiar uh, as a former Badger. Uh, we saw him um, many years. And so uh, what a talented running back can also, um, uh, you know, 
do the receiving. Um, and so I think he's going to get uh, over, he's going to get three, I think, you know, more than three uh, receptions. And I think that um, they have some, some chemistry uh, already early on in the season together. Uh, and he's done really well with running the ball. Um, so, uh, I mean, Wentz isn't the most accurate quarterback at all. Uh, doesn't really have uh, a high um, uh, passer rating, but it's he, he's still seemingly being able to get it done. And for some reason, he stayed healthy this year, which is rare. And it's the Jets. And it's yeah. Jets. <laughs> Bottom line, <laughs> on it's prime Jets. time. In prime time. They don't stop. What do you think, KG? Solid reasoning. I like her plays. Yeah, you know, and here's the deal. Uh, you have to think with being a, a double-digit favorite, the Colts are going to score some points, regardless of the over-under play. And, and Wentz is the guy they're using in the red zone. He's getting it done. Mo Ali cox is a sneaky, good tight end that doesn't get a lot of yes. pub but can, can get some things done. And Jonathan Taylor dumped the ball off, and that guy can do great, great things. He did it at Wisconsin. He's doing it with the Colts. He's a really dynamic player, and I think uh, they'll throw the ball to him enough. Yeah. Some, somebody may have disconnected. I'm hearing Kevin on playback. playback. I reconnected. Perfect. Okay. So you have a prop play. I'm still hearing a little delay somewhere. So, Carly, you may want to check out your end. So um, there we go. That's there better. we go. Perfect. Okay. So um, so I was looking at your prop play, and you only have one tonight. And, and it was the player I expected, but not the play I expected. So I've got Michael two Carter. plays. I, no, I I've got two. One. Yeah, you did. I've got a, a, a let's start when, and I'll let you kind of catch up. It's an easy one. It's uh, and it's laying 150. So I'm, I'm actually, I, I rarely do this to me, but I've got a Jonathan Taylor touchdown in there. Um, it was listed right above the, the, the Michael Carter. And, and uh, I, I do believe back to tying into thinking big on this game that, that the Jets are a tough team to back when it comes to defense. I think they can score some points. I don't think their defense is up to snuff. And I think the best weapon that, that Carson Wentz has is Jonathan Taylor, the former Badger. So we've got to lay 150 to make $100. So you're you're basically laying three to two odds. So it's a risky proposition. You have to be very certain that this is going to happen. If you've watched the Colts the last three or four weeks, this is the guy. And back to Carlos point with the injuries at wide receiver, no T.Y. Hilton, who used to be very dynamic. Um, okay. This is the guy outside of Michael Pittman and Mo Ali Cox that gets the ball especially in the red zone. So we've got a touchdown for Jonathan Taylor at minus 150. That to me is going to be of the three plays, the most important one. And I think because you're risking 150, you've got to get that done. But it's also the one that I feel strongest about. Now let's get into Michael Carter, because I think for a lot of people out there that are casual football fans, they don't know this guy. You should get to know him. Uh, he's a rookie running back. I was lucky enough to draft him in my big league out of Canterbury. And I knew early in the year they were going to slowly kind of work him in. But a couple of weeks ago in London, he had a bit of a breakout. And now they're using him a, a bunch. And this bet, though, is against Michael Carter on the rushing side. And one trend I've seen with Carter and the Jets is they're sharing the backfield in terms of running. He is the, getting the lion's share of the passing duties. So the, the spot play here is under 49.5 rushing yards for Michael Carter. The reason he still might be a nice option for you tonight in Daily Fantasy is the last two weeks – double digits in terms of catching the ball. I think eight one week, seven the other. So 15 catches for running back in two weeks' time tells you that they are using him a ton in that area. Won't rush the ball, and he's got a good running defense. I think he'll catch the ball. So we're going to go under 49 and a half rushing. Yeah, targeted 14 times by White mm -hmm. in that game last Sunday. Yes. So I was like, what's the over-under on his you know pass receptions? Because, I mean, yeah. he's, Take a, a look he's at obviously that a sure. security blanket right now. Yeah, and they're getting pressure, right? I mean, the Jets' offensive line is a work in progress still. They're a bad football team. So you have to understand bad football teams, number one, are not good on the offensive line, and number two, they're usually chasing the game. That tells me yep. Michael Carter's going to do a lot more in the receiving game than he is the rushing game. The only way he ends up going over this rushing total, number one, he gets a huge run, which I don't think he's going to do, and number two is if the Jets are leading, and I don't think that's going to happen. So I think we're on the right side of that prop. <laughs> So let's make sure I'm with you on all this stuff. So right now your your play is over 46. And your that's prop the plan of the plays, game. Over 46. Yep. And your prop plays Carter under 49 and a half rushing yards and Correct. touchdown for Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. 
There's my three prop. There's my three plays total. Two props, okay. one game. Okay, I didn't have that one. Then I made it and I made it wrong. So I just wanted an opportunity to kind of mend all my fences here before we <laughs> go on just to your fine. other plays. <laughs> okay. So you always are kind enough to give us a couple of looks ahead. And you're going to do that. Not only are you going to do that, well, we're going to talk a little bit uh, college football in our backyard, the show coming to you from Minnesota. And uh, you've got to play on the uh, Gopher game. The Gophers are home on uh, Saturday morning. They've got Illinois coming in. The Illini getting 14 and a half points with an over under of 43 and a half. So apparently they're not going to score any points uh, on Saturday. At least that's what Vegas is telling us. Well, and, and Carlos, too young. But, Timmy, you and I are old enough to remember those Saturday morning cartoons when we were in the 70s and kids. And the cartoon where the guy's eyes would pop right out of his head, right? I looked at that line on Monday morning, and literally I had to push my eyeballs back into my eye sockets. I'm like, what? 14 and a half point favorites? I mean, are you nuts to sound like Glenn Mason here? But are no, I, I, right away. I mean, seriously. Uh, so right away, I was like, I'm making a case for Illinois. And I love Row the Boat and the Gophers and Sky Uman. In fact, toured the campus yesterday with my youngest daughter. It's beautiful. Yes, I hope she goes there. All that stuff. But give me a break. The Gophers have Iowa on deck, which is a huge game. They're coming yes. off another big win. Coach gets the big contract. And oh, by the way, Illinois has covered their last six as Big Ten dogs of 13 or more. And if you want some recent history, Turn back the calendar a couple weeks to when they, they were playing Penn State out uh, Nittany Lion Way yeah. as a double-digit underdog and won the game outright. Oh, yes, please. Oh, right. In terms of betting, I am taking the 14 and a half, and I am taking Illinois. I want the Gophers to win. The dream can still be alive for the Rose Bowl and all that Big Ten championship, but no way, no how am I laying 14 and a half points with them having Iowa on deck. Uh-uh, not going to do it. Senator? Boo. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the, the stats don't lie. Um, the stats don't lie. But I, I will say this. Um, the, the Gophers are fired up right now. Oh, breaking news. Um, the running back from Hastings High School is now going to yes. be starting for the Gophers. <laughs> what a coaching job. Seriously, amazing yeah. that they've been able to withstand yeah. not one, not two, but now three legitimate season-ending yeah. injuries. To the, and that's a credit to the program and back yeah. to what Carlos said about um, the, culture. the culture that he has created where it's next man up and we don't make any you know excuses. We just move forward. Awesome to see this happening with that type of adversity. Yeah, and I think um, they're, they're just fired up right now and, and maybe they're going to come in even with some more um, pep in their row uh, to, you know, because of PJ's big announcement and – just, um, you know, hopefully it's just they have that energy to play good ball through November because, my God, they need to do it to get through this. Um, you know, I, Ohio State, um, you know, Michigan State, uh, not university because they can't win anything big. Um, mm -hmm. But they they just can't win the big games. But I think, um, I, I don't know, I, I just, uh, I'm a believer, uh, but uh, the stats don't lie. So KG's my yeah, no, I, right. when I saw it too, I'm like, oh, mm. and then yeah. you think, well, boy, they did cover that against Northwestern last week. Yeah. And that and Penn State game was good. Yeah, you mentioned the the backs, you know, uh, boy, the, the, the two kids, a true freshman and a redshirt freshman, and, yep. and they've both been just wonderful. And so like, I'm like, get a lead on Illinois and put those two in bubble wrap. Get the reserve linebacker. Get whoever else you want, you know, carrying the ball in the second half, you know, as they as they learn the position because that's what's happening. They, they are taking receivers and they are taking defensive backs who played the position in high school and they're working them out in practice because they have to. That's yeah. where they are right now. And one other thing is, I, I mean, I know he's he's not like the most fancy, shiniest quarterback, but I like Tanner Morgan, and um, you know, I just, want to. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I get I want on to. social media when I say stuff like that, but I mean, and maybe that's the best way to say it, but he really, he brings some, some leadership and just seniority and veteran, you know, swagger to the, to the, to the team. But I, I just like him. I he's like got him. as much experience, man. He's been in big spots before. I mean, there's nothing yeah. that should be phasing this kid, KG. Right. Well, who would you rather have in, in, in the Big Ten West where the Gophers reside? Who would you rather have a quarterback? I mean, I, I hate to say it, um, but he's the best uh, of the bunch. I mean, you know, you look at that kid in Nebraska, and you can maybe make a case for, for Martinez, and, and I get it. He's 
he's a dynamic, more of a running type of guy, but he makes so many mistakes. Like yeah. it, it, for this football team, with who they are and and how they want to play, he fits perfectly. Uh, I mean, off the field, you can't find a better kid. I've seen enough right. data there and heard enough interviews and and uh, the relationship he had with uh, his late father. I mean, uh, yeah. you talk about a guy that's promoting what the coaching the staff is trying to sell and promoting mm-hmm. college football. Yeah, this is the guy um, yeah. that I want as a leader on my football team. Does he have shortcomings mm-hmm. physically? Yeah, most college quarterbacks do. So, mm-hmm. um, no, I you pull for these guys. And when I make a play like this, listen, I'm not going to celebrate Minnesota <laughs> losing. I want – I want the right. Gophers to win. But, I mean, when, when yeah. you're handicapping games and prognosticating, you got to put your heart aside. You've got to play the game the way you believe it's meant to be played. And 14 and a half points is too many. I think Minnesota wins, but I think they're going to get up in the game and, and they're going to grind out that clock. And I, you know, I see the game kind of being a 27 to 16 type of game where I think the Gophers will get the job done winning the game. But I think the point spread is just a little bit too inflated. I love it. <clears throat> just get out of there with no injuries and, and we're all good. All right, let's get a few other plays in there before we run out of time here. You're staying in college, and you've got a couple of the academies meeting this weekend. Yeah, an interesting game. Army and Air Force are, are both overachieving. They're playing good football. Love uh, love the, the military uh, uh, programs. They're always fun to watch. One of my favorite traditions is the Army-Navy game in December. Oh, yeah. Here's a good oh, spot for Air Force, though, right? There you go. Um, Army allowed 70 points last week against Wake Forest, a lot of that on the ground. And here comes Air Force, who leads NCAA football, averaging 318 rushing yards a game. Yes, please, let's fly away with the Falcons. We're going to lay the two and a half with Air Force. They're going to be able to dictate the offensive terms of this game. They're going to control the clock, control the ball, and in the end, they're going to win by more than two and a half. To the NFL, where we have to talk about it, the Purple Clash, the Vikings going to Baltimore oh. to take on the Ravens. The air is out of the Vikings balloon. Can they reinflate it in time for Sunday? I don't think there's anyone here of the three of us that believes that's going to happen. But they are the Vikings, and they're at their very best when everybody <laughs> says they're going to lose. So maybe somehow, some way, they rise up from the ashes of what it looks like a dead season. But Let's not forget, Baltimore hasn't played in two weeks. They lost at home to Cincinnati. They are angry, and they are off the bye. Here come the Vikings. No Patrick Peterson, no Daniil Hunter, and a guy named Lamar Jackson staring you down. Pack a lunch. Ravens are 12-1 and against the spread, against a non-division team when they come off the bye. Against the number, yeah. I am late 14 for the Ravens. And again, I love to be wrong for all you Vikings fans. I love the Broncos. I love the Vikings. Unfortunately, in my eyes, neither one of my teams plays in the postseason this year. And this is a bad spot for Minnesota. Yeah, I think there's only uh, things that are being packed are probably Zimmer's box out of his office by the end of the year. But it's, um, <laughs> it's, oh. I, I mean, oh. this is. Yeah, they're gonna. It's gonna be brutal on on Sunday. I mean, I don't know how else to how else to say it. I think there's just again a lack of leadership, a lack of urgency, horrible play calling, and um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's gonna. And Baltimore is a contender, obviously, um, for postseason, and they're gonna play like it. Um, we're not, and we'll probably will play like it. Somebody should be playing like it's for their job, but I don't think that'll happen. Yeah, the Ravens, they need the game. I mean, it's mm-hmm. one of those things where they're they're yep. they're fighting, they're scratching. And so um, you're right. The Vikings are weird. You never know what to expect. All we got to do is put it in prime time, and you do know what you can expect. They will lose, mm-hmm. and they will not show up. All right, our other game we got, we've got the uh, – Patriots. And if you're a Patriots fan and you suffered, you know, the loss of Tom Brady, man, that, that thing's kind of turned around in a short period of time. The Pats are suddenly a, a team uh, also in contention for a postseason play. Yeah, they played well. Their four and four record really doesn't do justice to how well they played. They should have beat Dallas a couple weeks ago, which really would be a different dynamic to their, their numbers right now. But they're in a great spot here. Uh, I put down playing- to the wire too, KG. Yeah, they, they've played well. I mean, they are mm-hmm. as good a 4-4 four and four team as there is uh, in the league. And here comes Carolina, who's at home, which you have to respect that with the big crowds now. But they're coming off a loss at the Giants and a loss at home to the Vikings. If those aren't a pair of red flags, I don't know what is. Patriots 9-1 and one against the number. 
as favorites of seven or less when they play against the NFC South. So there's a, a sneaky good trend here that favors New England. And, and Vegas isn't backing down. Like when I looked at this game on Monday morning, I thought the line would be maybe New England by a point or two. It opened at three and a half. It's gone up to four. Vegas is making their proverbial you know, line in the sand here saying, we dare you to take a bad team in Carolina who looked like a good team early but has been exposed. So, no, I, I'm not buying it. I think New England's in a great spot for victory here. I think their defense is rolling. I think Carolina's going to have a really hard time moving the football. Even if McCaffrey comes back, which there's a chance he does, not going to matter. New England wins this game by at least seven. I thought I read they put him back on IR, which is what I was just going to say, is that I that I think he didn't um, do as well in his rehab, and they put him back on on IR. And so I think that's a huge factor uh, in this game, and I agree with KG. I think Pats are going to win. I'm just bored of the whole Christian McCaffrey thing. I'm like, you know what? Don't go back. To- Every week he's like, oh, he might play this week. Oh, he's not going to. Yeah, you know, I know. Did you draft, did you draft him, Tim? Did you draft him? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just easily bored. Now, we went the whole half hour out of time, never even talked about the guy next door who said, oh. I'm immunized back in August and has been pretending oh. like he's been vaccinated, doing all the things that you're not supposed to be doing, NFL protocol. And what do you think they're going to do to the defending uh, NFL MVP? Nothing, because he gets no. preferential treatment. Oh. Yeah, they need no, him no. on TV, Timmy. They need him in prime time. They need him in the playoffs. There's not going to be anything done. And, you know, I'll say this. Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback, is one of the all-time greats for me. I mean, I think he is mm-hmm. un unbelievably talented, gifted guy. Aaron Rodgers, the human being. No, thank you. Yep. Well said. I want you have nothing else I can add to that. That was a score thematic. <laughs> throw away the key. Yeah. It away. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Carla, thank you so much. We love thank it you. when we're able to think big once a week. Thank you. Thank you for having me guys. You are the absolute best. KG, obviously, we'll be back with you tomorrow. And just a programming note, if you watch this program and you don't watch the one that's coming up at 9.30 this morning, 9.30 tomorrow, we are going to have Minnesota Wild General Manager, or sorry, scratch president. that, Minnesota Wild President, Team President, Matt Maka is going to join us for the full half hour. And he's going to answer our questions, and uh, we're going to get a peek behind the curtain at what's going on with the Minnesota Wild going forward. So, KG, you originally scheduled to do that show, and I bounced you from that one because somebody else was available. So I'm like, ah, hmm. so I'm sorry about that. But that's uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, we're traveling tomorrow to Pittsburgh. They bumped up the flight, so it actually works out well. And you know, Matt and I have a great relationship. I have a ton of respect for him. Uh, his passion for the Minnesota Wild will come through in this interview. And what I love about him is he's very transparent. Like he is at at the heart, like us. He's a he's a rube. He's a fan, man. He he gets nervous on game nights. He wants oh, them yeah. to win. He cares. And for a team president, I think you know, for all of us who are all fans, right? You just hope they have the same passion. That guy does. The dogs are barking. That means I've gone <laughs> overtime. Nine o'clock dinner the time, baby. Fed, they know. Walked. Thank you for watching. This is It's Gorgomatic for the Senator and for the one and only Kevin Gorg, a.k.a. Gorgomatic. Thank you for watching this program where occasionally we do think big but we are always, always, always 149%.